And now we come to that portion where we get to meet one of the country's eminent business movers, this week in the person of Dioseldo C. Whether you are a basketball fan or a fashionista, you would have heard of the empire that this business leader has built. Get to know more about him in his upcoming feature. Ever Vilena is the leading Filipino cosmetics brand here at home. Uh, he came here empty-handed. Of course, they paid some sums of money in China to be able to leave the country. So he came here, he started the cosmetic business, which is at the time, was doing pomade in particular. So that's how he started. Uh, and during the war, he was able to uh, continue doing the business because uh, our home was on top of the Japanese headquarters. So he was one of the luckier ones who were able to continue the business because he was uh, sort of being protected by the Japanese uh, soldiers. He took up marketing and business management in college, but admits to not finishing his college course because he chose to work instead. He is the eldest of a brood of six, with one brother and four sisters. Born in Tondo, he grew up in Caloocan, a place he is most familiar with. Now in business for himself after his grandfather died in an accident in 1969, he found himself in the business of cosmetics because this was what he has known all his life. He knew he had to find a business partner and found one from Taiwan. Ever in Mandarin, of course, means forever. But Bilena means beautiful lady in the Chinese language, which is what explains the name of his cosmetics line. Ever Bilena started with only one product, nail polish, but it became highly successful because it was affordable to the ordinary Filipinos, the students with limited budgets, and the ordinary housewives and working ladies. I started around uh, March of 1983, so it was at that time uh, the country was a bit uh, in chaotic, and it was also the, that same year in August when uh, uh, Aquino was assassinated. And then there was a huge uh, migrant, people were leaving the country. And uh, as we said, there's always uh, opportunity in any crisis. So it turned out to be an opportunity for me because people, businessmen, people are leaving. So there was a vacuum in uh, business here. So I was able to penetrate the market quite easily. This year, Everbilena is turning 33, and the cosmetics line has grown to include several items, from makeup to skin and hair care. Junisho C. believes that looking good should not be made available only to those who have money. The Filipina is a beautiful woman, and enhancing that beauty with the right cosmetics is a source of fulfillment to this owner of the company. Well, it's not pioneer. Probably can say it's from the earliest cosmetic companies who was able to uh, took advantage of the industry of cosmetics industry at that time because at that time cosmetics was considered uh, expensive and very unaffordable that's why we coined the word looking good is no longer luxury so when we came in we were able to penetrate the market easily even if we're new because we're selling probably a 25% of the products, of the prices of other brands. He also knew that grabbing the opportunity when it presented itself, having the perfect timing and then working from there gave him the right business environment from which he could build his empire. The year that Ninoy was born was when the country was in chaos and in every crisis there are opportunities to be explored. When I was young, I dreamed to become a basketball player. That's my first dream to become a player but uh, obviously because I have to I played in high school I was supposed to play in collegiate but I have to work and I cannot play basketball in my college days so it was a big sacrifice for me at that time but it was probably you call it destiny I was destined not to play basketball at the time and and do uh, a job start a business at a young age Basketball has remained his one true love as far as sports is concerned. These days, it is just a hobby that he still enjoys. No, I started 97, I started a blue detergent team in the PBL. That's where 
where uh, Asi Taulaba and uh, Jimmy Alapag came in when they were still uh, Philams. Uh, I was the one who brought them here for the first time. And while basketball continues to be close to his heart, he has other advocacies that are equally as dear to him. You know, we are the ones who's running the Philippine women's team today. Uh, we were quite successful this year, the Perlas team. For the first time, we were able to win in the level two and go into level one. Uh, it's part of our advocacy, uh, grassroots basketball, not only for men's but also for women's. His advocacies do not end with sports. Like most successful businessmen with a heart, he has learned to give back to society, and this he does through one of the organizations he faithfully supports, the Philippine National Red Cross. Well, we're very uh, working closely with the uh, Red Cross. We are very close with uh, Rosa Rosal. Uh, we, it's one of our advocacy in helping them. We have this uh, twice a year program of uh, 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 shedding, um, uh, getting some blood from our people. To this day, his work ethics has remained the same over the years. He wakes up as early as 6 a.m. to start his day. Well, I start early. I start 6 o'clock in the morning, then uh, a little prayer, then breakfast with my kids. Then I'm normally in the office around 9, between 9 to 10, I'm in the office already. But no matter how busy he is, family will always be at the core of this successful businessman. He travels at least twice a year with his family, a quality bonding time for all of them. And where there is no mistaking his success, he looks back at his mentors, those who have helped steer him towards the right direction. I always say there's no, no uh, shortcuts to, to be successful. Uh, people sometimes think that it's easy when they come to my office, they see me just signing papers, doing this and that. And I saw this uh, from my two mentors, Jiang Gokong and Henry C. I saw them how they grew up around my age, around mid-50s also. I was quite fortunate to learn from them, to, they were able to share to me their wisdom. So those are during my early 20s. So I think those are some of the things that I learned from them, which I don't learn in school. And how does he like to be remembered when he finally hangs up his gloves, which is unlikely to happen soon? Well, maybe uh, I was quite instrumental in uh, beautifying Filipina. Because without Ever Belena, I don't think the ordinary masa can afford the lipstick, the eyeliners and the cologne so and all these things so in short it's a it make me happy and it's a it's a feel feel good when you see people using your products especially when i'm out i ask a waitress what's your brand then they say i'm using your two-way cake your eyeliner it makes you feel good because he knew the business he developed a feel of the need and early on, he developed his talent for the right colors, the right makeup, and whatever the Filipino wants. Nowadays, as he gets on with age, he relies more on his daughter and the rest of his team for this. But he has found another venue for his talent, and that is in the area of packaging of his company's product lines, where he finds fulfillment in his creative talent. So now, Ever Bilena, the Filipino cosmetic company, continues to live on a household name. Indeed, Ever Belena has become a household name as an affordable line of cosmetic products. It is a proudly Filipino company that was born out of sheer hard work, and that hard work has paid off not only for the company, but also for the millions of Filipino women who now appreciate that beauty is finally affordable for all.